Hello, I'm Dr. Yunnan. Hello, I'm Dr. Jake Begun, and we're Australian gastroenterologists with an interest in inflammatory bowel disease. Well, welcome to our Gut Talk TV. Today, we are going to talk about medical management of ulcerative colitis. Um, last video we uploaded, we look at general overview of inflammatory bowel disease. Um, and, but we're going to now split that into medical management of ulcerative colitis mm -hmm. and medical management of Crohn's disease, which we'll talk about in the different video. So, Jay, can you just run us down of how you approach patients with um, ulcerative colitis mm -hmm. um, in terms of medical therapy that's available for them? Sure. Um, and I'm going to be talking about a general approach to medical therapy, but we're also going to go into greater detail on each one of the classes of medications that we're going to talk about in their own separate videos, since there's a lot to it. Mm -hmm. But if you think about someone who's just been diagnosed with ulcerative colitis or is having a flare of their ulcerative colitis, our goal with medical therapy is to bring the inflammation levels right down and that allows the gut to heal and that's really our goal with our therapies that we're going to be talking about. And in general, the principle that we have is a pyramid approach to medical management. At the base of that pyramid are the medications that have the least amount of side effects, um, but also aren't uh, that strong in terms of potency. So we start off with those, but if those aren't working, then we work our way up the pyramid where the higher levels have more potency, but also potentially more side effects or more things that we have to consider about mm -hmm. them, more complexity. Mm -hmm. So if we look at the base of the pyramid then, that base is composed of five aminosalicylic acids, which is a real mouthful, which is why we often abbreviate it to five AS. Mm -hmm. So Yoon, do you want to tell us a little bit about therapy with 5-ASAs? Sure. So with a 5-ASA, it comes in different types of medication mm -hmm. within it and also comes in different forms. Mm -hmm. But to simplify it, it comes in on oral medical therapy options of tablets or granules. Um, and it comes in the topical therapy form, which is suppository or enema. Um, Depending where your disease location is, um, we use the appropriate medication for you. Um, tablet form, the way you take the either tablet or granules covers any anywhere in the colon and you'll treat the inflammation, try to heal the gut. However, if you have more of isolated um, disease in the rectum or on the left side of the colon, then it is beneficial to have topical therapy to go in and cover the area of inflammation and act directly to heal the gut. Usually it is ideal when you have a flare or just been diagnosed with ulcerative colitis to combine those two therapies so you can get um, best potency by combining together. So it's very usual for doctors to say for the next two to four weeks, can you take a tablets as well as suppository or um, enema together? And that will be hopefully bypassing you to be on steroid therapy or escalation of another level of therapy. So that's the um, really just rundown of what uh, simplifying 5 is. Mm -hmm. And then going up the level, then we have immunomodulators. So Jake, can you talk about, talk about um, immunomodulators? Sure, so immunomodulators represent a more potent type of medication, the second rung of our pyramid. And whereas the 5-ASA medications really just treat the surface levels of the colon and treat the inflammation just in the, the surface levels, immunomodulators really affect the immune system systemically throughout the body. So the typical immunomodulators used in Australia are thiopurines, and thiopurines include azathioprine or imuran, mercaptopurine, which is also called purinethal, and sometimes thioguanine, which is also called landvis for people who don't tolerate azathioprine or mercaptopurine. These drugs work by taking the edge off the immune system. They're often called immunosuppressants, and certainly at higher doses, they can have very potent immunosuppressive activity, but at the doses we use in inflammatory bowel disease, I like to call them immunomodulators because we really just take the edge off the immune system, if you will. And these drugs um, uh, have to be dosed carefully uh, so that we just get that right sweet spot. So when you're taking these medications, we're often monitoring blood tests, like the full blood count, the liver tests, to make sure that you're tolerating the medicine and metabolizing it properly, and try to get to the optimal level of the medication. These medications are not fast acting. They take a while to work. And I would say somewhere between four and 12 weeks is when we see their maximum efficacy to make a determination about if they're working or not. So on the broad sweeps, that is uh, what immunomodulators are in the setting of ulcerative colitis. Now for some patients, even that immunomodulation is not enough and we have to go on to stronger medications, our top uh, piece of the pyramid, which are the biologic medications. Mm -hmm. So Yoon, do you wanna give us an overview of the biologic medications that are available? Sure, sure. Um, so with the biologic therapy, um, 
just keep in mind that there are more uh, trials that's currently happening and not only biologic therapy but in the um, small molecule area as well um, hopefully where those medication will start making and uh, itself into the market and it's more available for our IBD patient however just focus on what's currently available in um, Australia we have two classes of biologic therapy one is anti-TNF therapy and one of them is anti-integrin therapy so in anti-TNF therapy it comes in three different types of infliximab, adalimumab or golimumab. In anti-integrin uh, therapy it's called vitalizumab, it's one brand. So at the moment there's a full biologic therapy that's available. It comes in either in intravenous form or subcutaneous form. What it means is sometimes you have to come into the hospital um, to get the infusion, you get a cannula in, you get the medication by the drip. However, some medical option can um, happen at home where you give yourself injection as frequently as the two weeks. So biologic therapy is beneficial because it, since it's so potent, you don't have to take it every day, but you need um, to have a, either every two weeks or every eight weeks for the therapy. But it is definitely very potent, it works well, but it comes with its um, own side effect and we can talk about that in another video as Jake has mentioned. So then we um, need to talk about what happens um, during, while you're on those therapy, uh -huh. um, you sometimes we need to use a medication called steroid uh -huh. because we can't escalate or we want to give a more opportunity for it to work. Can you talk about steroid Absolutely. therapy? So I think when we talk about the pyramid approach to drugs, we're really talking about medications that can be used in the long term as maintenance therapies. Whereas steroids are something that we use for short periods of time, either when we're moving up the pyramid, we have to go to another level, mm -hmm. or if we have a flare that we're trying to control. Steroids are very effective in the short term at controlling inflammation, but they have a lot of side effects in the long term, which is why we can't use them as a maintenance therapy for long periods of time. And in addition, they don't really allow the gut to heal as much as these other medications we've talked about. Steroids can come uh, in multiple forms, similar to 5-ASAs as an oral uh, steroid, and that is often absorbed by the body and acts systemically to suppress the immune system for short periods of time. But it can also exist as topical therapies, uh, given as a rectal uh, preparation, either a suppository or an enema, and these have less systemic effects, so less immunosuppression systemically, more immunosuppression in the gut. And we generally use these for short periods of time, generally less than two months uh, in duration, and we often start at a high dose and then sort of work our way down uh, as we're going on to the new therapy or to see how things go. And as I mentioned before, it's either when we're going up from one step of the pyramid to another, or if there's a flare when you're on one medication, we treat the flare with steroids and hope that things settle after the steroid course. Mm -hmm. And that really kind of summarizes steroids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So overall, regardless of which medication you're in, it is very important you to take the medication, um, hopefully religiously, <laughs> <laughs> um, and also discuss with the doctor when you have a flare of symptom earlier on, rather than living at it is until the next appointment. Sometimes it's important for us to jump in earlier so that we can adjust the doses or adjust the cl um, make you make sure you're in the right class of medications or whether you need a steroid therapy or not. So I hope that you find this video useful. Um, and if you have any questions or comments, please leave it below.